Mm. Wonderful. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Nice to see you on Sunday. Thank you for checking in. Now, you know, if you're regular, Sunday it's a cocktail book day, and today it's no exception. But today is very special because, first of all, I want to introduce a book which I really love. Second, it's a book which talk about uh, an ingredient which I really love. And third, is the word day of this ingredient today. So it's like a lot of happenings. Oh, and the fourth thing, but you, I'll tell you in the end, I mean, not in the end, just a little bit in a few moments, I'm starting a new Instagram account as well. So, if you're new to the channel, first of all, make sure you subscribe for cocktails, recipes, homemade ingredients and book reviews here. So you can learn something all the time and get some more ideas about your home bar but let's go back to the video now today is the word vermouth day yeah there is a day for everything but this day i love it because for those of you who watch the channel and some of you who chat with me you know i'm a big fan of vermouths and i'm a big fan of amarus so today it's a very special day for me and that's why i wanted to introduce to you a book which is all about the vermouths and this is a spirited guide to vermouth now this book it's a wonderful piece and if you want to learn something more about the vermouth and if you're interested in the fortified wines, I'll strongly suggest you get this book because it's not one of these books which uh, you just get a book and it's full with cocktails. This book goes through the history of the vermouth, the producers, the different type of vermouths, the botanicals, everything before it's go to the cocktails. You have also its few parts and the, the second part is how to drink vermouth. So this is where it's explaining how to be enjoyed the best. And then we're going to the cocktails, which it's not so many. Now the cocktails, it's in different uh, kind of a groups, uh, separated like cocktails with sherry, with cognac, with ray whiskey, with vodka, with gin. And most of the recipes, it's contributed by other mixologists or bartenders around the world, or the author took some of the famous books and pick a recipes. Now the author of the book, it's a restaurateur who fell in love with this uh, wonderful fortified wine like me. His name is Jack Adair Bevan and he decided to, you know, find out more about the vermouth, got obsessed and uh, basically came to the point when he wrote a book about the vermouth. And it's a wonderful read. Now, also, a very, very, uh, extremely excited about that. You're not gonna only find cocktails inside, but we will find a cooking recipes which use vermouth. Like, for example, buttermilk and Negroni panna cotta. Oh, yes. Bring one. Gingerbread with baked apple and vermouth ice cream. Uh, what else we have? Oh, you have preserves, so you can learn how to do Seville blood orange and vermouth marmalade, or you can learn how to do point and half sherry, cherries. So it's not just one of, you know, these books which you usually buy and you get cocktails, as I mentioned, and that's it, nothing else. It's a wonderful read, it's going through the most famous vermouth, it's explaining history, how it's made and everything, then telling you how to drink it, then the cocktails, then the cooking recipes. So it's a wonderful piece to have on your shelves. Seriously, if you like vermouth, I mean, you don't have to be a big fan like me, like a crazy, have how many bottles, but if you like the vermouth and you want to find out more, this is the book. And once again, uh, to mention, uh, it's the word vermouth day. And I'm starting today a new account, which has been shaking, steered and baked for a long time, but I wanted to release the account on this day. So the, the, the account on Instagram, it's called Vermut Amaru. I'm gonna leave a link in the description if you wanna follow. And the, the account is designed with only one purpose, to find out, uh, to explore and bring to you Everything about Vermouth and Amaro's story, reviews, cocktails, recipes, everything. So it's not one of these accounts which I'm bothered how many followers I'm going to have. Uh, it will have a good photography, but it's more about the history behind the Vermouth and Amaro. So if you're interested, 
Make sure to follow, link is gonna be in the description. I appreciate it if you give a little push. And of course, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Now, let's go behind the bar and make two cocktails with vermouth for you and see how you feel about it. Okay guys, so let's start with the first cocktail which I picked from the book and let me just open to my mark here. Now the first cocktail which I picked from the book, it's called Ford Cocktail, it's very old cocktail. So the, the first recording of the cocktail is from the Modern American Drinks by George Kapler from 1895. It's a simple, delicious, of course, because it's old cocktail, there won't be any juices, any things like that. It's a straightforward, not boozy, but spirit and vermouth oriented cocktail. Let's put it this way. It's a very, very simple, but delicious. So let's make it without wasting any more time. I will follow exactly the recipe. And this book, it's pretty new, as you can see doesn't like to stay. So what we need for the cocktail, we need a dry gin. So I'm gonna grab my Plymouth because I really like the Plymouth, how it's worked with the vermouth. However, feel free to use uh, whatever gin you have, maybe beef eater or aviation or whatever you have. So we need that and we need a dry vermouth. As you know, I love my Noili Prat, so that's what we're gonna get, the king of the vermouth. Then we're gonna need a little bit of Benedictine, a dash of Angostura and an orange peel. And that's all. The cocktail is steered and it's served in a small glass. Back in the days, the cocktails wasn't that big like we used to have them these days. They didn't have that big glasses or fancy stuff. So I will serve this in a Nick and Nora glass, which is basically my favorite glass ever, to be honest. I really like it. So we're gonna serve in this one. First of all, I'm gonna chew my glass. That's very important uh, because it serves straight up. It's nice to chew your glass. So drop some ice, leave it on the side, and let's make the cocktail. As I say, it's a steered cocktail, so we need our mixing glass. Gin and vermouth in this recipe, it's 50-50. Uh, so in the recipe originally it's 25 ml. Uh, we're gonna go with uh, 30 ml to be more precise and more easy for you uh, who's using ounces to make it. So I will go with 30 ml or one ounce per serve. And this is gonna be both exactly the same. So grab your gin and let's do it. 30 ml of your dry London gin, whatever gin you have, as I mentioned. I will be using Noili Prat because, I don't know, I think I've mentioned it before, but in my opinion, it's uh, one of the best gins when it's come to cocktails, served like that straight up with the martinis or vermouths. Uh, it's the profile of the gin, it's worked fantastically with this uh, fortified wine. So if you can get a Plymouth gin, I highly recommend it. Right, 30 ml of a Danoili Prat. Again, use your dry vermouth, which you have at home. But, king of the vermouth, guys. You can't go wrong with this, all right? So we have 10 ml of the Benedictine. Uh, this is gonna bring some herbal notes and a little bit of sweetness because you have already the, the juniper and the dryness from the London Dry and you introducing a little bit more dryness from the Noily Prat as well. So both of them, it's a kind of a dry side test of the cocktail. And we need a little sweetener here, and this is gonna be the Benedictine, which is only 10 ml. Just a 10 ml, not much. Do not put more or less. I mean, it's up to you, it's personal preference, but I do suggest that you increase maybe the Benedictine to maybe dilute the cocktail more because it's gonna be really sweet. Then we need two dashes of Angostura bitters. So we just need two of them. So one, two, that's it. Nice and simple. I do love simple cocktails like that and if you're following my channel, you, you should know by now that I'm a bigger fan of this type of drinks which I can feel the spirits and the 
ingredients and I can experience the full flavor and the profile of these ingredients. And uh, we are done. Now we're gonna stir, then we're just gonna garnish with the orange zest and this is it. So a little bit of rice, drop some ice in our mixing glass. Now when you stir cocktails, don't go, sorry about the noise. When you stir cocktails, don't go easy on the ice, okay? Make sure you have enough ice in the glass so you can stop the diluting the process first very fast and then you just chew your drink. If you put a little bit of ice, uh, this is gonna dilute the drink uh, too much and it may make it a little bit too watery, okay? That's good. 20, 30 seconds, that'll be enough. We are good here with the Nick and Nora. Just a little spin on the glass. And ready to serve, of course. I'm gonna use this strainer so I can put my bar spoon through it. And just gonna hold my bar spoon and we'll serve the four cocktail. As you can see, it's a very small, short cocktail. Even I increased with five mil the original recipe. So you may even need a smaller glass than this, okay? But if you follow this recipe, Nick and Nora should be absolutely fine. And a, a good orange zest here. I wanna make the stripe really nice. Use my new knife, by the way. Uh, my friends from uh, Ron Colon sent me a brand new knife, which I'm really loving. It's so sharp, actually, it's scary how sharp it is. So just gonna give a little bit extract of the orange. And all we do is just twist it and drop in. And that's it. This is basically the cocktail, the fourth cocktail. Cheers. A wonderful sip absolutely amazing let's go to the next one all right guys so this is the second cocktail and I want to introduce to you a cocktail which I think I don't know you tell me but I think it's a good choice because it's going to introduce a split base of vermouth here so as you can see it's not always to use the same vermouth you can do a split base of vermouth and this cocktail also introducing tequila to the mix which is very interesting because there's no many cocktails which it's tequila with vermouth okay usually when we hear about vermouth you kind of a you know I mean logically thinking it's gonna be with vodka or gin but not in this cocktail it's introducing tequila blanco and also just a, a garnish with a lemon peel and that's it so it's very, again, straightforward spirit and fortified wine. The cocktail, it's from the 1937 Café Royale cocktail book. Uh, here what it says, I'm reading through the book because this is book review, anyway. It says it's well balanced, there is also another similar drink called a matador that contains curacao, blue curacao. But the author here, it says, no thank you, I don't want to drink a blue drink, which it's uh, associate uh, with the James Cameron's Avatar movie, which kind of understandable, you know what I mean, when you have vermouth and tequila, I don't know, some people like fancy blue cocktail, but I'm with him on this. So the original recipe here, it's uh, calling for anti antica formula vermouth, which uh, I don't have at the moment, but it's a red vermouth and I have a very close and very good substitution to this vermouth. As you know, I usually use it all the time and this is the vermouth di Torino Rosso. However, if you have uh, Antica Formula vermouth, use it, okay? So we're gonna use this vermouth and of course we're gonna use again Noili Prat and a Tequila Blanco. The cocktail is shaking, so let's build it up, okay? So, 20 ml of the, both vermouths because we're doing split base. So we're gonna start with our vermouth di Torino Rosso, 20 ml. Uh, now, 20 ml, I think it's a two-third of an ounce, but 
hey, I'm gonna have to check again because as I mentioned a few videos ago, I'm still getting used on this, uh, you know, I mean, uh, conversion of units, so I may do a mistake, but I will do my best to try again. So another 20 mil, this time dry vermouth. So you have the rosso, which is your sweet component here, and then we go with the dry vermouth to bring some dryness to the cocktail. Of course, we're using noily flat again. And then tequila blanco. So I'm gonna grab just whatever it's close on the shelf. This is the Cascabel Tequila Blanco, fantastic tequila. So if it's on the shelf here, it's a good product. If it's somewhere down, I mean, it's just probably never gonna be used. Anyway, 40 mil of the tequila. As you can see, this cocktail is a boozy. It's basically, it's very weird because you may say, why you don't start with the tequila? This is sounds like the base of the cocktail because obviously, it's the more volume, you know what I mean, 40 mil, which it's, uh, it's not even an ounce and a half, it's an ounce and something. Seriously, I'm gonna put all the conversion down in the description as always, you know, the recipes, it's always there. But because we talk about vermouth cocktails and we have a split base, so we have kind of pretty much 50-50 of the both. So, because it's created as a vermouth cocktail, that's why the tequila is not going first and that's why it's not kind of a, uh, qualify as a tequila cocktail. Just clarify, every mixologist or bartender who create cocktail has something in mind and here it's to introduce the wonderful fortified wine, the sweetness from the rosso, the dryness from the noily prat and then to bring a little bit of punch up the alcohol volume, it's introducing tequila with a lovely agave and earth flavor which is actually pairing very nice with vermouth so this is it there's no bitters there's nothing that's all it is so all we need it's ice in our shaker let's just put this in the big one all right i'm gonna grab some ice give it a good shake and we're gonna serve Wonderful. This is a beautiful drink, definitely. Uh, by the way, I'm making it first time and I've not tried it yet, but from my experience over the years, which it's over 20 years behind the bar, I can tell you this is gonna be a fantastic drink. So let me leave this on the side and let's make it a little bit more fancy, okay? So I'm gonna serve in a martini glass, but kind of a, is it broken, cut off? We'll see now. I don't know how to call it. Yeah, ice. That's what we need. A crushed ice. I had to smash this in the back. But there you go. And this is our glass now. It's coming. Just gonna pinch it inside. Maybe a little bit too much at the moment, but it's gonna melt and slowly it's gonna fall down. Okay? So oh, there you go, let's get my strainer and we're gonna give it a double strain just because it's shaken there will be a, some small parts of the ice which you don't want to float in the cocktail. We want to give it a best, uh, how to say, customer experience and in this case it's you at home. So yeah, treat yourself the proper way. And this is it. Let's put this on the side. And for a garnish I'm gonna use uh, whatever is recommended here, if I find my pillar, yeah. So it's just a lemon zest peel, so I'm gonna get a good lemon zest. I'm gonna extract first some of the zest on top of the drink. And then again, I'm just gonna clear my strip of lemon, just to look nice. That's the simplest way to put a lemon. You see, it's, it's just a nice strip, so you don't need to I never get too fancy, but it's nice to look good inside. And just drop it like that, inside. And when you want to drink, just pick up your glass, which is frozen with ice now. Very, very weird, that glass, but I like it, I like it. Cheers. Ooh. So this is the Sombrero cocktail. 
Obviously it doesn't look like sombrero in this glass, but because it's uh, introducing tequila inside, that's I presume that's why the name is come sombrero. Uh, you know, them nice big hats which have been so many times in Mexico and I never got one. I should get one for me. Anyway, it's a wonderful cocktail. You have this split base of uh, dry and sweet vermouth. And you can feel it, the dry is a little bit more prominent because of the tequila, obviously. The tequila, Blanco, it's more earthy with agave. It's have this punch, obviously, from the high ABV. So it's giving a little bit more power to the dryness. But then on the back end, you're getting your sweetness. And of course, you get this a little bit touch of the lemon uh, oil, which we extract. So it's wonderful when you drink it. Have this lovely aromas of the lemon. It's a it's a wonderful, I would say, aperitivo cocktail. Just before meal to enjoy one, or maybe in a nice company when you have some snack on the side and just having a nice chat. It's a wonderful cocktail. So yeah, that's it, guys, from me. We have the fourth cocktail and we have the sombrero. If you like to learn more about vermouths, I'll say get this book because it's a wonderful. And as I mentioned in the beginning. Follow my new Instagram, uh, which is all about Vermouths and Amaros. It's starting now, so I'm gonna build up slowly and I'm gonna introduce many good things out there. Apart from that, thank you for watching, thank you for being a supporter to the channel, thanks to all new subscribers. And of course, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to click the subscribe button, click like, share, comment. And as always, enjoy your day, night, evening, enjoy whatever you do. And don't forget, I'm always here Thursday and Sunday. I think with all this said, it's time for me to go and drink these drinks. Obviously, I'm going to share them with my wife. Bye-bye. For now, I love you and I leave you. Bye.